What's that mean? That means uh, you can go online or you can go to one of the people who give the test. You get this form, you fill it out, accept the box that says, am I starting a new license? Am I renewing a new license? Am I changing my address? You just check off, I'm renewing. Send it back to the FCC. They'll send you a license back that says, well, your license now expires 10 years from now. Okay? So you can renew your license, but you like to do it before it expires. Okay? Now, here's an exception. There's a two-year grace period to renew your license, and you will then keep the same call letters. So let's say that you're old and got white hair like me. And you said, oh my gosh, my license expired a year and a half ago. I, oh, I totally forgot that. I can actually fill out the form and mail it in, and my license will still be valid. As long as I did it within the two years. Okay? Now, uh, if, you know, if your license is expired and you're within the grace period, you can't knowingly transmit. So, I can't get on the radio and be talking to you and say, yeah, my license expired a year and a half ago, but yeah, I'll wait a couple more months to renew it. If the FCC ever hears me say that, they will terminate my license, okay? So, once you get to the grace period, you can inadvertently transmit, but you can't knowingly transmit, okay? If you renew during the grace period, you can continue to transmit once the FCC's database shows that your license is renewed. So they say, okay, I'm a year and a half in, oh gee, I forgot to renew it, I gotta stop transmitting. I fill out the paperwork, I send it in, I check their database a couple, three days later, oh, it's back in there, good, I can start transmitting again. If you don't renew by the end of the second year grace period, you have to take the license test again, and you would not get the same call letters. Okay, you actually, at the end of that grace period, say, well, gee, I want to renew. No such thing. You have to take the test again. And when you take the test again, you're going to get a different set of call letters. It's like saying, I let my license plate expire on my car. Totally. And a year later, I went back to renew. They'll say, give us the old license plate back. Here's your new plate. Kind of like that. Do you get to pick your call letters? We're going to get to all that. Okay. Oh, yeah. No, that's a good question. Whenever you have a question that I don't cover, I'll give you the answer right away. But when we're going to cover it, I'm going to tell you to hold off. Okay. There's no, there's no questions here. This is just extra information. You see there's no bullets out here. So there's three levels. Technician, that's the entry level. General and extra. That's the sequence in which you get them. The technician gives you some basic privileges on high frequencies, which you'll understand later. And the radios are primarily... For the most part, when people get that license, they're using the handheld radios. Handhelds. Now, they're called HTs. Why are they called HTs? Handy talkie. <laughs> That's the acronym for handy talkie. Okay? So people say HTs, they're talking about little guys like this. The general class license gives you gives the majority of frequencies to let you talk to other amateur radio operators across the country and around the world. That's That was the whole novelty back when I got it. I would strongly suggest you get a general if that's what you'd like to do with a hobby. The extra gives you a few more privileges, but uh, you probably wouldn't even appreciate that. Okay, let's keep going. The FCC defines the rules and regulations for amateur radio in what they refer to as Part 97. Now, let's figure this out. The FCC controls uh, television frequencies, AM frequencies, FM frequencies, amateur radio. They, they control tons and tons and tons of different kind of stuff. Well, is there one big book you go to to figure it all out? No. Each of those things they call a part. So there's the book, part 97. That, there's where everything about amateur radio is, is defined from their point of view. So in their big library, part 97 is the amateur radio. That's all you got to memorize. <coughs> um, the FCC part 95, uh, okay, so we uh, define amateur radio as an apparatus necessary to carry out radio communications. And again, this is kind of the legal term, an apparatus. Well, okay. it's a it's a hobby, <laughs> but it's an apparatus necessary to carry out radio communication. It's very good. By the way, when you fill out the application on the test, you'll be required to give your mailing address. Okay? So once you're, I say that because once you're in the FCC's database and you have a license, anybody can go online, look up your call letters, K1DFO, okay, it'll give my name, my actual address, and it'll tell what class of license I have and when it expires. That'll all be in their database. It will not give the social security number. It okay? won't do that. You just need that to take the test. If the FCC ever mails you something, and this is one of their questions, ever mails you something that's returned because the address is incorrect, they can revoke your station license or suspend it. What is that all about? 
whenever you move, you got to notify them that you have a new mailing address. That's the gig. Okay, that's the gig. Anytime you move, it's the same form again, except you check out a new address and you mail it in or have someone mail it in for you. And you have to tell them what the current address is. Okay, one of their rules. Okay, no questions here. There's no age limits for holding an amateur license. You can, folks are not too young. They can be people younger than you or older than you. Uh, a nine-year-old boy, uh, a local kid who lives around here, took my technician license. Uh, his dad was a hand. He passed. Unbelievable. Here's a, this is back several years ago when there was five levels of licenses, okay? And you had to do a, a five words a minute code test. For another one, you had to do 13 words a minute. And for the extra, you had to do 20 words a minute. And look at this. Ten-year-old Samantha, here's her call letters, in Pennsylvania, received her novice license at age eight in May 3rd, 1994. Then gave up TV for the summer and fall, and eight months later, on this date, uh, she was nine and a half years old. She passed her amateur extra, uh, bingo. But she basically got all five of the licenses, but nine years old, wow. Cool. Impressive, very impressive. Someone have a question, I'm sorry. Okay, there's a picture of my license, okay? This is what you get in the mail. So it's from the FCC, there's my call letters, there's my name and address. Uh, there's now. This is a. This is a, uh, a, a. You know, one of my updated ones when I had to renew it. This is one of my renewed licenses. So it doesn't say I got my license in 1957. So the last time I renewed it was back here in 2001. And that was the date it was effective. Uh, they printed it that date. It's going to expire this September. So this summer I got a little note in my computer that says renew your license. Okay, here's my file number. Uh, the amateur extra, that's what I got, I'm an extra class, and station privilege primary, we'll talk about that later, okay? But they'll send you a, one about that big and they'll send you a couple small ones. So I have a radio in my car, so I keep a small one in my glove compartment. Uh, I keep a little, I keep this thing on my wall in my home, in case I'm ever challenged. Okay, guess what? That's the end of section number one. And now I'm gonna go to section number two. Let me, let me close it. Well, I'll leave that open. Section two, call signs. And I will answer the question that Terry had. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, I'll explain this, and I'll tell you why. International Telecommunications Union, ITU, assists in the managing of frequency usage worldwide. Uh, okay, now. This question here, now this is my comment. Uh, this question, T1BO1. T1BO1 says that there are, a, that they are a United Nations agency for informing, for information and communication technology issues. Well, technically they're not a United Nations agency. What they are is they're a group where there's one, one person who represents every country in the world. Okay? Now, what do they do? Well, you say, gee whiz, uh, when I listen to AM radio, it's on these frequencies. If I listen to FM radio, it's on these frequencies. Okay, well, is it just that way in the US? No, it's, it's pretty much the same in Canada, Mexico. Uh, if you went to Europe, it'd be pretty much the same, different language, but same frequencies. Ah, this is what these people do. They kind of agree on which frequencies ought to be used for what in different countries. So they agree, on, in this case, in our case, on what frequencies ought to be used by amateur radio operators. So when I'm on a frequency, people in Australia, I can talk to someone in Australia because they're allowed to use the same frequencies. Okay? So what this ITU organization does is they arrange it so that frequencies are pretty much common to different types of apparatus in different countries, television, AM radio, FM radio, amateur radio, okay, that's what they do. The Earth, and they've divided the Earth up into three groups, and this is a question. So as you can see here, the Americas and Greenland are region two, that's the only thing you have to memorize. Region one would be most of Asia and Africa, region three is <coughs> Australia, India, and the Pacific. The only one you gotta memorize is the Americas and Greenland, region two. Now why do they have three regions? Because sometimes some of these things they do are by region. So there's a couple of amateur radio frequencies 
that we can use here that they can't use in Japan. Don't memorize that, just a little information. Okay, so the ITU also establishes the prefix of your amateur or your call sign. So, for instance, I, my call sign is a K. Well, that's the, I mean, here's how the call signs work. And then, you know, there's no questions here, okay? In the, an amateur call sign will have a prefix. It's going to be one or two letters. Mine is just one letter, K. The letters, the one or two letters will be followed by a number, zero through nine. Okay? After that, it's a suffix, which could be one, two, or three letters. So I, my call letter is K, one, DFO. One letter, one number, three letters. Okay. The FCC issues the amateur call signs in the U.S. and its possessions. Okay, they already, we know that. Uh, the first letter of an FCC call, uh, when I say FCC, we're talking about the U.S. now. Okay. Strictly the U.S. The first letter of a call in the U.S. for amateur is must be a W or a K or an A or an N. So mine is a K. But I have friends who have W something something. I have friends who have an A. What was the issue? They ran out of Ws. They ran out of Ks. They ran out of As. So they added more and more. So in the U.S., when you see a call that starts with one of those four letters, you know it's a U.S. call. Period. Over now. There's no other country in the world that has those any of those four letters as a prefix. Now, what the ITU also does, they set the prefix list up for every place else in the world. So if I hear a ham radio operator and his first letters are BK, oh, guess where? He's from Australia. If I hear ZL, oh, that's New Zealand. So I can tell by the first two letters of an amateur radio call where in the world they are. Everywhere in the world has one or two letters, but they have specific prefix letters. Okay? And there's a map of the world. Okay, let's keep going. Okay. The number you get depends, in like in the U.S., the number you're going to get depends on what state you're in, and we'll see that in the next chart. And the suffix letters, these here, are, are issued sequentially. Okay, so let's just go to the next chart. So my number is one. What did that mean? Oh, I got my call from where I lived back in New England, because that's where I was living when I got my call. Okay. So California is the only place where one state occupies one number. So your call letter will have the number six. That's it. Okay? If you got your call in Nevada, it would be a seven. Okay? If you got it in New Jersey, New York, it'd be a two. So your, your number is going to be a six. Now, is it going to be a W, a K, an A, or an N? Don't know. But it will be a six. Now. Then there'll be three letters that'll follow it, and they'll simply give them out in alphabetical order. So well, let's say you all passed, and they send all the paperwork in, and they're all processed at the same time. She might get the AAJ, AAK, AAL, AAM. They just give them out in sequential order. Okay. Well, you know, a lot of you get the same thing. Uh, Alaska is KL7, specifically, and Hawaii is KH6, uh, but all the rest are here. Okay. okay. Now, here's some examples of call letters, and I've just given you some variations. K1 DFO, so it's one letter, three letters. A D five Z, here's two letters, one letter. W3 A B C, one letter, three letters, N3 A B F. Okay, so these are all valid calls. Now, you notice here I've I've got the question T1 CO4, CO3, four places. So here's the question that they say in that question. Which of the following is a valid FCC call? Well, obviously that one is. Here's one of their answers. KMA305. Well, that can't be because it's got three letters here and four numbers. So that's not valid. KDKA. Well, it's not valid because there's no number. 11Q117. Now, that's not valid because it doesn't start with a KWA or N, and it's got a whole bunch of numbers in it that doesn't end with letters. So. Here's an example of one question, and here's an example of why these were bad and why that one was good. There are many special events where ham operators participate. So here's a good example. Every year, the Boy Scouts have a jamboree somewhere in the country. 